Good morning, folks. For the second day in a row, we've got the sun firing at Venus straight off the eastern limb. The Earth-facing eruption threat is filamentary right now. That thin line is 700,000 kilometers of plasma poised to erupt any time, and the length is a technicality as a tiny break at the turn northward is the only thing separating another half a million kilometers in what would be one of the longest filament structures ever witnessed on the Sun. Also, while monitoring a departing filament, a smaller one lifted up and snapped out ahead of it. The material collapsed, though, rather than ejected as a CME. FYI, solar activity should tick up soon, as Mercury is coming in to conjoin the Sun. Until then, the Sun is calm, no major flares, and no sunspots to deliver any more. After the departing sunspots up north, a couple magnetically active areas incoming at the limb are the only thing that will keep us from having a zero sunspot event. Even these won't be major actors for another few days. It's one week until Mercury conjoins the Sun. Overnight, a coronal hole stream began clipping our magnetosphere. Speed ticked up slightly, and while it delivered a standard shockwave to our system, the shield itself handled it very nicely with only minor instability. The next coronal hole is barely visible as only a slightly darker patch coming in here, inconspicuous partly due to minor force only in the region. Top story is just how damaging core exit is to humans and marine animal health, especially to the epithelial cells of the respiratory tract. Most infuriating, however, is where they point to a solution. Develop drugs to boost our immunity to core exit. So we should take more poison to help deal with that poison rather than not poison in the first place. Nice. We've also got the latest SVS animation link, the global precipitation mission satellite tracks and composite patterns that are giving us our current global water data. Got a link from Hubble on electromagnetic structures around quasars. They are all in loops braids, and helical vortices. We're strictly within the electric realm here, even if the article fails to mention it. As you know, the West is having the opposite year as the East, very hot, and here is a comparison of average snowpack in the area versus what we see now. This will lead to more drought in the spring and a worse wildfire season, neither of which they need. I'd also like to note that VIP Plus tickets are gone for observing the frontier. Plenty of other tickets left for our October conference in Pittsburgh. In case you didn't hear, our next city will likely be Phoenix in late January. We'll kick off weather with a sandstorm that just pounded the Middle East. Qatar and United Arab Emirates getting the worst. A good question right now has got to be where is this guy driving and why is he still going? Never mind, this is one of the largest sandstorms in years. Hopefully it'll end soon. Most impressive storm on the planet, however, has got to be Typhoon Maysac in the West Pacific. A tremendous event, as you can see here from space. However, I've got some great news as the eye has disappeared with a slight weakening event as the typhoon is approaching the Philippines. Our hope is that this makes for a lighter impact on those islands, and then the same if it manages to get to the coastline of China or Vietnam. Across the Pacific, we're seeing western Canada under fire from a strong low here. Further east, we're looking at another climate extremes event straddling a convergence line coming down off a low pressure cell at the Hudson Bay. As it cuts down through the states, we see air of differing temperature, moisture, and electric potential mixed together and work out their differences above our heads. We've got more alerts tonight that could include more tornadoes. Eyes on it. Over in Europe, we have a flow along a pressure convergence coming towards land there. We also have two lows to the east, one south and one to the north. That is where you see the clouds concentrated today and heading into tonight. Down under, we've got a low cresting New Zealand that draws its convergence back across southern Australia for yet another day. And that is where the storm cells are tracking right now. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Remember to grab your tickets for the conference and check out the new Deeper Look episode at SuspiciousObservers.org. Eyes open. No fear. It's 5.45 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.